Chomp Man, Games Without Code. Created for developers of all levels and based on the beloved classic arcade game Pac-Man, this project was created to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide that would give you the tools, techniques, and experience of creating a full game from start to finish. All the game assets, textures, UI, and effects were created from scratch and we're giving them to you for free. So if you wish to follow along step by step, you can download the Chopman project files from the links in the description or from the Unity Asset Store. In this Games Without Code video, we're going to create our main menu using Bolt. So let's now go back into our main state now that we finished our arcade fade screen state and let's create a new state and we're going to call that logo reveal and let's create a transition from our arcade state into our logo reveal and let's go within our transition. So we want our transition to happen once the alpha of our black screen image is set to zero. So to do this, we're gonna use a branch node and a comparison node to begin our transition. So let's first start with a branch node and we know we want that to be true. Connect that and add our update event because we want that to check for that every frame. And the value that we want it to check is our black screen alpha float. And we wanna say if that black screen alpha float is less or equal to zero, then transition to the next state. So with that complete, let's go into our logo reveal state. So for our logo reveal state, we're only going to need the start state so we can delete our exit and update state. And for our logo reveal state, what we want to do is we want to scale the logo up from zero back to its original scale. And to do that, what we're going to use is the Dotween nodes that we added into our project. So we're going to go from our start state, drag that out and type Doe scale. And for the object we want to scale in, we want that to be our logo object. And for our value, we want that to be our original scale. Now for our duration, we could just start with 0.75 to test that out and see how that looks. Next, we wanted to reveal our play button after it's finished revealing our logo. So we're gonna use a wait for seconds and set that delay the same as we have our duration. So like we did in our Blink Bolt video, as well as our Ghost Blink Shape video, to use a wait for seconds, we need to set the state to a coroutine. So we're gonna click our on enter state event and we're gonna change that into a coroutine. So once that's complete, we're gonna grab our dose scale. I'm just gonna copy that and I'm just gonna control D to duplicate that. And we're going to use our play button variable as well as our play button original scale variable. And we can set that to be 0.5 so that comes in a little bit faster. Now that that's complete, let's right click and create another flow state. And we're gonna call this flow state button pulse. And let's make a transition from our logo reveal into our button pulse. And for this transition, we're going to do it very similar to the way the other transition where we're just going to use a branch to see if the logo scale is equal to the original logo uh, vector three scale that we save in our variable. And we want to compare the button original scale with the current button scale. And since we don't have a variable for that, what we're going to do is we're going to use the component to get the local scale so we can see the current scale of the object. So it's going to drag in our play button variable. And then we're going to go to get, we're going to add a get component node. And for the type, we want that to be a transform type. We want to say get local scale and then we're going to plug that into our equal node. 
So before we continue, let's test out what we have so far. So we can see that we have our screen starts black, it fades from black to reveal our background image and reveals our logo as well as our play button. So let's go into our button pulse state. If our button pulse state, we won't need our update in our exit state. So we can delete those. We're just gonna be using our start state and for this, we're going to use the dose scale to scale our button up and down. So we're going to drag from our start and we're going to get a dose scale node and we want it to scale our button object. So we're going to put that into our dose scale. And for the scale that we want to set, we're going to add our current scale, our original button scale with another value. And then we're going to subtract that to make it scale smaller. So let's create a new variable and we're gonna call this add tween scale. And we want this variable to be a vector three. And let's just set our add to about 0.1. Drag our new variable into our scene and we're gonna get an add node. And we want that to add into our original scale. And we want the result to be put into our do tween scale. And for our duration, let's create a new variable since we're gonna be using this in several nodes. So let's create a new float variable and we're gonna call that play pulse duration. And let's make that a float. And for now, let's set that to a value of one. And we're just gonna drag that into our scene. Set that into our duration. So after we goes to our larger size, the next thing we want to do is we want it to return back to its original size. Let's add a wait node, wait for seconds. And we're gonna use our duration to define the time. Also change this to a coroutine. Looks just a little bit cleaner like that. So it's gonna, and we're gonna grab these nodes right here. So we know we're using the, we need the same type of node and let's duplicate these, move these out. And instead of an add, we're just gonna use a subtract as our value. We want our weight to here. And since we want this to continuously happening, what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate our weight, duplicate our pulse duration. And we're just gonna drag this back in to the dose scale. Let's move this above, just has a little bit of cleaner look to it. And let's test this out to make sure everything is working correctly. So we can see if we hit play, it's subtracting the value, but it's also going into the negative and flipping that upside down. So to fix this, we just simply need to flip the nodes that we have going into our subtract to make sure that the add tween scale is subtracting from the original scale value and not the reverse. So if we now hit play, You can see that our button is pulsating correctly. So let's go back to our main state. At this point, we just need to create one more state, which is going to be our state once the player presses the play button and it will load them into our level scene. So we're gonna right click and create another flow state. I'm gonna call this one load level. And let's make a transition from our button pulse into our load level. And for this transition, we want to use an on button click node. And for the button, we're going to use our play button object. And we're going to get our button component and pass that into the on button click. 
We're gonna pass this into our button click. And now that we have that complete, we can go into our load level state. And let's remove our update and our exit. And let's get a, and let's get our load level by name. And let's create a string variable. We're going to call this string variable next scene name. And we're going to grab, pass our next scene name into our scene manager load level. And let's grab the level 01 we created in our scene development video. And let's put that into our scene name. So at this point, we have all of our functions in our menu, but we need to add our sound elements to our menu as well. So to do that, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create two new game objects and they're gonna be children under our main camera. So we're gonna create a two empty game objects. And on these, we're gonna add a audio source. So for the first object, we're gonna call that game music audio source object. In the second, we're gonna call that effects, sound effects, audio source OBJ. So for our game music, we can simply drag a sound file into our scene. And we're gonna set that to loop and we're also gonna adjust our volume so it doesn't drown out the sound of the effects in our scene. Next, we need to create a variable for our sound effects. And we're gonna make this variable an audio source. And we're gonna drag our sound effects audio source into our sound effects audio source variable. So we want our first sound cue to play when our logo is revealed. And we want our second sound cue to play when our play button is revealed as well. And we also want one for our play button once the player presses the play button. So we're gonna go to our logo reveal state and we're gonna add a play one shot node. And for our audio source, we're gonna grab the audio source variable we just created. And for our clip, we can simply choose one of the, the clips that's in the sound folder and drag that into our node. So we're gonna place this node right here, the beginning of our scale, and we're gonna drag that into our weight. And let's duplicate this, so control D, and we're gonna do that with our play button as well. And let's use a different effect for that one. And for our audio source, so we're just gonna clean that up a little bit. And let's go and put our last one in the load level state. So right before the state loads, after the player presses the button, they get the sound effect response. And let's drag our audio source variable in here. Get a one shot node. Sound clip here. And just to ensure that the player has enough time to hear it, let's add a slight weight. So let's look at this sound clip just to see how long it is. It's 0.2 seconds. So let's go. I'm going to add a wait for seconds node. And let's put our start event in our wait for seconds. So we'll put a 23 delay and change this to a coroutine. And let's save this and let's hit play and test this out. So 
So we can see we have all our components working. So we have all of our states working. The level didn't load. And the reason the level didn't load is because we haven't set that up in our build settings. So just to get that to load, we can go into our build settings. We can grab our scene, um, level 01. And we can close that. We could also put our main menu in here as well. And if we now hit play, We can see that our scene loads. And let's go and actually remove that because we're not getting, we didn't get our audio sound. And I'm going to put this in our play instead of our weight. So one of the last things that we're going to do is we're going to add some movement to our background once the logo and the play button appear on screen. So to do this, we're going to go and we're going to create another variable for our background game object. And we're going to change this to a game object variable and we're just going to drag our background into our variable. Next, let's go into our button pulse state. So we're just gonna create this in a new group and let's drag all our button pulse and just put that within a group for itself. I'm just gonna grab our start and let's duplicate our start and move that outside of that pulse button group. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get our background game object and we wanna get the rec transform component. So we're going to get component and for a type we're going to go rec transform and we want our start to start with getting our rec, rec transform component and then we're going to do a local dough move node and for our value we're going to use our rec transform that we got from our component for our end value we're just going to set that to 100. We want our duration to be fairly long because we want this to be fairly slow. We can lower that down to, let's lower that down to 90. And let's use our weight for seconds. And then let's duplicate these two. And we're going to move our weight for seconds to plug into our, our rec transform local move. I'm just going to take that down to zero. I'm going to put this weight into our other local move. So this way it can bounce back and forth. So once we have that plugging into our local move, we need to get our red transform component and we're gonna plug that into our value. So with that set, let's hit play and test that out. this duration just a bit so for our last step we're going to add our camera fade prefab which is a c-sharp script that we created in a previous lesson but if you'd like to download it there will be a link in the description so let's go back to our home view and we're going to have our camera fade effect. Just going to go with the black and let's have a brief pause before our fade. We'll have our fade last about two seconds. So let's also go into our transition from our start to our arcade screen fader. And let's add a wait for seconds here as well. So we're going to add a wait for seconds node. I'm going to change this to a coroutine and we'll go 
since our pause is, we have a one second pause as well as a two second fade. So with our fader in our screen, we can now go and we can hit play to test our functionality. So now that we have all the elements of our main menu complete, in our next video, we'll begin implementing our gameplay mechanics and creating our gameplay. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.